Yesterday evening, I received a request from the head boy of the Islamic International School saying that the students of 10 standards require a session with me and they would like to ask some queries regarding career guidance. I told them, okay, fine, you can prepare your questions, what are queries you have regarding career guidance. And that's how we have the session of the 10th A and B, the girls and boys of the Islamic International School. So I hope you all have prepared your questions regarding career guidance. See to it that the questions are limited to career guidance only. Any other questions on Islam and compared religion, anything else on Fiqh Masal can be asked later on. So this session is exclusively regarding career guidance, regarding a future, what you should do after passing school, maybe college, after passing IGCSC, where you should spend your more time. So any information regarding that, where you have to spend more time after finishing your school, college, graduation so the session is mainly based on that yes mr muswak assalamualaikum wa alaikum assalam wa barakatuh sir alhamdulillah as a teacher i get opportunity to speak to the parents as well as the students what i see is that when the children are in the school they are charged up they want to work in the cause of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when they see the current scenario what is happening with the muslims and what we should do but back home maybe there is a pressure of becoming a doctor becoming an engineer or so on now uh, putting this um, question very straightforward. If a student at IS thinks that, okay, I, I want to dedicate myself for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he studies whatever profession, either of the five faculties that we are going to be providing them and thinks that, okay, I am going to work for the sake of Allah in the school itself at IRF, will he be able to earn a decent earning and work 24-7 for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Sister, I have a question that what the atmosphere at school is such, the students are charged up. When they go home, the parents may not be that much inclined as our teaching, the like doctors, engineers. So if a student yet wants to continue in IRF, will they have a decent living? Will they be able to earn that much where they have a decent living? Sister, decent living is subjective. What is decent for me may not be decent for you. What is decent for him may not be decent for her. So it's subjective. And that itself is depending on each one's taqwa. And one thing is no human being on a normal person can be satisfied whatever salary he or she gets. Generally, 99% of the human beings will not be satisfied with what they earn. Whether he may be earning 3,000 a month or 3 lakh a month or 3 crore or 3 million dollars or 10 million dollars. Even the richest man in the world is not happy. Because our beloved Prophet, as I said, he said, Allah says that if I give a value of gold, he would want the second. If Allah would give him a second, he would want the third. A value of gold costs how much? Even Bill Gates cannot buy a value of gold. He was at valley, he can't even buy half or quarter valley. So Allah says that if I make a person the owner of a valley of gold, means 10 times richer than the richest man, he would want a second. If Allah gives him the second valley, he would want a third. So based on this sister, it is subjective. But regarding a normal question, that will IRF be able to give to the same profession outside than others? Yes. There was a time when I said we want to be A plus, the best. I am not saying we are the best, but we are amongst the best. Surely we pay salary for the same job what it does outside on an A level. There are people who pay A plus also. So there's so much of competition, especially in the media and the shaitan is there. So at a time I always wanted to be A plus, now I said no, A is sufficient. So what we pay, whether to a cameraman outside, inside, whether a director working outside, even though we are competing with multinationals, 
same way with our teachers inshallah i cannot say we are paying the best in bombay but surely we are paying on the higher side to the teachers so if a student wants to be a teacher but natural teaching in ias would be far better for him in this dunya than teaching outside fine if you say that can you compare his salary to a person who wants to become a doctor fine if i say that if he becomes the average doctor then our teachers salary will be better than a not average a low doctor that i can say because we have got mashallah because if our students if you fail to realize that what we pay now what we pay to dais the high level dais is much more than average doctor what he earns in mumbai we are paying to a high dais much more than an average engineer but if you compare to the best engineer then but natural you cannot pay him that much as the best engineer so based on that alhamdulillah he can very well sacrifice even his medical profession in terms of money in terms of sawab you cannot compare the sawab of a dai is far superior and as we are growing now when we go to the new section but natural the whole scale also keeps on changing and as mashallah allah is helping us what we are seeing we want to give a platform in which din and dunya is more and what we realize that all those who are be paid hashed in our organization they never demand the top 5 in organization who are being paid mashallah big not the school are uh, being paid more than a lakh rupees none of them demanded and i'm sure of it that even if we give them half they will not leave the organization but these are the pillars these are the pillars so what we realize because they have got so much involved in the field of islam they are working for money but just because they are not working for money i cannot be unjust and say okay theek hai isko aadha bhi denge to rahega to aadha do na so many people in zakir bhai why are giving so much i said because they deserve it not that we have extra money because it is of it so you should take one step in the way of allah allah take 10 steps in your way deen and dunya both alhamdulillah so we have gone to a professional level unlike that it's not like you sacrifice everything then only can do the work of allah so mashallah yet there are the sacrifices so normally i feel that once we grow and we are growing alhamdulillah but the main thing is i would not want them to say that because irf is giving a good salary therefore we want to work in irf or is i want them to come for sake of allah so allah gives them this din and dunya also because allah says in surah hud and many other verses that if you do it for akhira allah will give akhira in this world also if you do it for this world allah will give you in this world but will not give in akhira and the best example is me you know mashallah we are a lucrative business i was 50% partner we set up the diagnostic center i left it my parents gave me permission fine no problem what will do we learn less mashallah we are earning much more in that business even after i left i am doing other business there also we are getting mashallah so allah is giving we left it thinking that we want to work for allah so we are working for allah even if i had been the best doctor in the world i would not have got the respect what i get today you know in my dream i could have dreamt of becoming the best surgeon in the world i couldn't have dreamt of speaking in front of 25 people as you know my mother wanted me to become like chris bonnard was the first heart specialist heart surgeon who did the first heart transplant so when i said would you want me to become like shaykh dida or chris bonnard she said both but after a few years when i asked her the same question she said i can sacrifice a thousand chris bonnard for one shaykh dida so what do you realize that we read for last sake well i not knowing that i would be a speaker we set up irf and never knew i would be a speaker but allah gave it to us now the respect that i get even the best doctor in the world won't get we didn't do it for that the heads of states the king the sheikhs the prime minister the president we are guest we cannot imagine what respect we get we didn't do it for that we did for allah but allah gives you but one thing is that the shaitan is always after you the devil you should not let the devil get the better of you So as a die, you should know the shaitan tempts you. You know the power, the fame, the money, all these are distractions. So we pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, may He keep us on the straight path, for we are human beings. With that in mind, if a student of IS does it only for the sake of Allah, Insha Allah, Allah will give you this dunya and the akhira. But in respect to you get this dunya or not, my logic is this dunya is for how many years? On average, sixty years. Some that age of twenty, some forty, some sixty, some eighty, some hundred. Average sixty, fifty-five, sixty. If you compare as a businessman to the next world, which is eternal, it's a very good bargain. So my logic is that 
take it for granted that you're doing only for akhira. And a dai should make his requirements less. The sister asked a good question that will it be sufficient? What is the meaning of sufficient? Therefore, when I married my wife, I told her that I will give you only 4,000 rupees per month. Minimum, not only, minimum 4,000 rupees a month. Don't marry me because I'm a doctor. Don't marry me because I'm rich. And mashallah, she was earning more than that. You know, she was teaching in a college. I give her more than 4,000. <laughs> but the thing is that I told her because you should realize that how you lead your life. Therefore, I tell my children, Allah has given the best of this world. But I make my children used to sleep on the floor. They have been to the best of hotels, five-star hotels, seven-star hotels, deluxe hotels. And they have slept on the floor also. Because they should not get addicted or should not get dependent on this luxury. A dai can only be successful if he's not dependent on the luxury. He's not dependent on the facility. We are giving AC not for luxury. We are giving AC so that your output is better. But in the house, we have a restriction. You can't put the AC on maximum once a month or twice a month. Not that we want to save the electricity. I don't want my children to become dependent on the AC. I don't want the children that when they go, they should have the best of hotels. Find their travel so they don't crave for that. But they've slept in the worst of the hotels. So a dai should know that these things of life, if he become dependent on, okay, today, fine, I'm earning a crore rupees. Tomorrow, if my business goes down, then I leave dawa. So I make myself that, fine, I can lead a life even with few thousand rupees. So when a dai knows that to make his life revolve around small facilities, if he's not dependent on luxury, that is the reason if you heard my lecture on purpose of life. And the position Allah has given us which we don't deserve, with the amount of gifts we get, lakhs of rupees of watches, Rolex watch, Omega watch, best of watches. But if I'm dependent on this watch, if people are going to recognize me because of this watch, what is the value of me? So we wear a 14 rupees watch. Many of you may be wearing more expensive watch than me also. Therefore, what we don't make them, we get pens which are costing 20,000, 30,000, one ball pen. We give gifts to others, that's what the Prophet did. I never give expensive gifts to my children. Fine, 5 rupees, 10 rupees, 25 rupees, okay. But why should I give my son a pen, when I use a pen of less than 100 rupees, why should I give my son a pen which is 20,000 or 40,000? Why should I give my son a watch which is dependent on? He should not be recognized because he's wearing a Rolex watch. He should be recognized because of the work he does. So when you lead a life, your requirements for life should be the least. A dai will be successful if you want. I want to live in a big house. I want a house which should be four bedroom. Should be 2,000 square. Should I waste it then? If you don't then you start telling lies. You start taking bribes. You start deviating from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or you may be honest, but you leave dawa and then you start earning money in the other ways. So if you make your requirements less, then what I require? I require only 10,000 rupees to live. Then whether I ask, give me 20,000 or 30,000, what's the problem? जमुमीन जीवन के लीडिंग They've got people who want two lakh rupees in an organization per month. Yet they're leading the life. The person who's four thousand rupees, I don't know, just ten thousand will get, and all my problems will be solved. The person who's ten thousand, he says, I want twenty thousand. The person who wants two lakh would want more if I take his interview. So we have people in an organization earning two lakh rupees a month. 
But the problem is that you should be satisfied with what you have. What you should say, I require 10,000, whatever else I will give it to Allah. So it doesn't make a difference whether you're on 20 or 30. So if you lead your life, what I do, I have a system. Whatever I earn, minimum so much percentage goes in the way of Allah. Minimum. And yet we have so much left with us, then we give more. So if you're not dependent on it, if you're not dependent on luxury, then you should make your requirements the minimum. And believe me, now my requirements have gone up because of Peace TV. Wallah. Because of Peace TV, now I should wear different clothes. First I had few pairs. But now I'm wearing more clothes because of the sake of Allah that I'm going on the channel. Never did we have only two suits, now we have more suits. Why? Not because I want to look handsome. Because I convinced myself Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now my personal expense has gone up only because of this. But that is going in the way of Allah. Fine, I can take from the Peace TV budget, why should I when Allah has given me? So what is required for the sake of Allah? So if you make your requirements less, that fine, I will lead my life in this. Whatever I earn, fine, I will invest some money. I will give 25%, 50% of money for the sake of Allah. So if you make that, then you will never be dependent on what money you get from your work you are doing. And even now, suppose God forbid, and I tell Allah, I always pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, let me not earn a single rupee more. If I earn this money which will take me away from Allah, I better not earn that money. So give me that much money, as much as you want give. But don't give me a rupee more which will take me even 0.1% away from Allah. This is the dua that I do. Tomorrow, God forbid, something happens to me, God forbid, Allah forbid. If I don't earn money, I would prefer taking salary from IRS. Taking salary is not haram. But if I'm worth X amount, I'll take 0.1X. I know outside people have offered job. So what I'll do, instead of one day, I'll give 10 days for sake of Allah, for my business, because I'm not earning, no. Or I'll say, forget that one day also, I'll give that as a sake of Allah, and I'll take about maybe, surely less than the highest person being paid here. So this, if you have your requirements cut down, then no one, inshallah, will be able to blackmail you. No one will be able to force you to do something against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So with this, if your requirements are reduced to the lowest, to the minimum, that doesn't mean that you should lead a life and sleep on the floor. Please, I'm not saying that. Depending on your ability that you have, your requirement should be subdued. So what you earn, you're not dependent on that. You said, okay, fine, yet I can sacrifice 50% of what I earn. So the salary system is subjective. But compared to the outside world, for the same profession, we have a policy of paying more. But I don't want the students to join IAS because they're being paid more. I want them to join, we'll give you more. But give majority of your earnings to the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, Allah will make you on a higher standard outside and in this world, inshallah. I think inshallah, we'll just have one last question. Just one last question, yes, brother. That, alhamdulillah, we have brought up our children in a complete Islamic environment. This is for those students who will be leaving. Possibly they might have a talent to become a doctor or an engineer, which the school is not providing. So won't they be facing something like a culture shock? But uh, I want you to give them some kind of motivational talk that they can cope up with that culture shock. As you know, when they go out in the college world, they will definitely see something which they have not been accustomed. This has a question that there may be some students who may have the ability to become a doctor and engineer and they may leave the school. So the culture shock. Before I answer that question, sister, that does mean a person who becomes a guy doesn't have the ability to become a doctor and engineer. I would want the students who have the ability to become a doctor and engineer to become a guy. Because normally what we have in society, the person who fails in school, okay, go to Madrasa, become Hafiz al-Quran. What I want the best of the students to present the deen. So if a person like me who could become a doctor, I haven't left medicine because my practice did not survive. So what I want, sister, your question should have been, those who feel dawah is not important and have chosen medicine, that's a better question. Because they fail to realize that doesn't mean that a person who chooses to do dawah cannot become a doctor. He can become a doctor and a dai, but he chose to become a dai and he sacrificed the worldly glory for sake of Allah. So coming back to it, I always say that amongst the students that pass, the best 50% would take up dawah, Islamic studies, teaching. The less 50% would become doctors and engineers. Saying to say that all our students should be good, but coming back to your question, if you rephrase it, that those students who yet feel that becoming a doctor is important, and if they go outside and they join a college, etc. Won't they be a cultural shock? They will be. But it will not be a big shock. Why? Because they're exposing our children to the outside world also. They have educational excursion. 
fine. Now, how to deal, but naturally there should be sessions. What we have to do, that they know the theory, but they may not know the practical aspect. I'll give you one example. I can give many, time is short. For example, it is common that when a girl wants to shake hands with the gent, 99% of the hand goes on top, front. I know many people who are Islamic scholars, who are dais, who know in theory shaking hands with a Nameram girl is haram. Not that they want to, but the moment the hand comes up, your hand goes in. And I've told that to many people. Unless you're mentally prepared that if a lady puts a hand in front, how will you react? So if you're mentally prepared, you're safe. And because I keep on traveling throughout the world, I'm mentally I'm prepared. And we know these situations come. We give talks to foreigners. We have gone to American embassies and giving talks. Mashallah, people have accepted Islam. In 2000, before 9-11, the first Muslim who gave a talk in the American embassy in Saudi Arabia was Mashallah myself. And amongst them, there was a culture attached to accepted Islam. Oh, Dr. Naik, very good lecture. Normal, the hand will go on top. Because I'm mentally trained, that was what to do now. No, it's not bad, it's not bad, it's not bad, but you know, how to reply that, sorry, ma'am, or sorry, sister, it's not already Islam, and then quote the Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse number 5, or 1 Timothy. So if you're trained, you don't make the person feel bad. Now the interview is going on. BBC, this, that, some ladies, CNN, hand goes on front. So my colleague, I won't take his name, Zakir Bhai, you say the truth, automatic hand goes on, you know? <laughs> Automatic But because you're trained, so if you're mentally prepared what to do, otherwise you know theoretically not to shake hand. But when you go in the outside world, a foreigner, a white lady puts that hand, so if you feel, it's automatically, it's human nature. But when we, when you're trained in that way, that okay, someone say, sister, don't feel bad, one is Islam, you know, this is there, this is there, then quote the Bible, oh, yes, sir. So they ask you one more question. Fine, we're lowering your gaze. So how to be trained like Makbul? Makbul, mashallah, you're not an Islamic scholar per se, but the way he practices Islam is one of the best in the full organization. In the full organization of 400 people, the gen that follows Islam best, according to me, is mashallah Makbul. Because not that he has gone to the research department, he's an operation manager. But the way he speaks with ladies, the way he lowers the gaze, the way he interacts. So one thing is being, because not that I told him, he sees me and he has adopted that. Other people also know. So what happens, you feel many Islamic scholars, they talk something, but in practical life. So unless you're mentally, not that these scholars want to shake and don't get me wrong, but this is human nature, that's a reaction. So in this way, sister, when they go, there'll be a cultural shock. I know that. It's common. Me, I had a different nature, mashallah, from school itself. Allah help me. That being in a medical atmosphere, in a medical college, it is one of the worst atmosphere. So these students, they have to give certain tips like how our life is outside. They know the theory, but practically, how to give them examples, how to get practically, they should be trained, and then we have that. They'll be in a better position to face the outside world, but they know the theory part of it, but practically, not that everyone who has been trained will be able to execute it, but we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, inshallah, and believe me, with the position that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, we meet a variety of people, top people, to refuse top people is more difficult, to refuse the layman is easy, you know? We don't mean top people are beating heads of states, ladies on top positions in governments. So that's the reason if you're mentally prepared and you're sure of yourself, inshallah, whatever post the opposite person is on, maybe he is the president or the prime minister or whatever it is, you know your Islam well and you're mentally prepared, inshallah, you'll be on the straight path. But practically something else than theory, but inshallah, I do agree with you, there should be a session. I mean, you can't do it now, you're running short of time. But there should be a session where the people are trained, not only outsiders, even our students. I want to go a step further, because they have an environment which is protected here. Outside, I would not like my son to go in a building which is 100% Muslim. They are Muslim, but many are far away from Islam, in the society. So how to interact? So that's the reason when the teachers take them outside, when we go on excursion tour, like we have a policy in our staff, that once a year we go for ATC, annual training camp, but the people have given a different acronym. There's annual torture camp, they say. <laughs> and there they see me laughing, enjoying, swimming, football, everything. In Islam, does not mean that you don't have to enjoy life? We enjoy life. And they see me so jovial. And at the same time, praying tajjud. Ha! Ah, many people say it's the first time in my life I've prayed tajjud. You're enjoying life, you're swimming, everything halal. Leaving the haram part and yet enjoying life so much. And I've enjoyed life even in my school days, my college days, mashallah, living aside the evil things. We have enjoyed life. 
Islamic doesn't mean no enjoyment, no laughing, nothing. You can enjoy life in the halal way, and yet, mashallah, get the best of this world in the akhirah. That answers the last question. We are running short of time. Inshallah, we may have maybe some other time in the session. Walk her down and Rabbil in a cell away from his family Is there a father in this world who would not defend Justice and rights till the very end Where are your jobs where it's security পরিচর্যা ছাড়া কোনো জিনিসই তার সৌন্দর্যতা টিকা রাখতে পারে না ঠিক তেমনই ইমান ও আমলের পরিচর্যা ছাড়া একজন মোমেনও তার লক্ষ্য উদ্দেশ্যে বুঝতে পারে ঈশ্বরকে যাচাই করার জন্য চারটি বৈশিষ্ট্য প্রথম হলো আহাদ তিনি একক দ্বিতীয় হলো সামাদ তিনি চিরস্থায়ী এবং কারো মুখাপে ক্ষীণন তৃতীয় হলো লাম ইয়ালিদ তিনি জন্ম নেননি এবং কাউকে জন্ম দেননি আর চতুর্থ হলো এবং তার সমতুল্য কোন কিছুই নাই আপনি যে ঈশ্বরের উপাসনা করেন তাকে সুরা ইখলাস দিয়ে যাচাই করতে পারেন ধর্মতত্ত্বের গোষ্ঠী পাথর বাংলা মানবতার সমাধান আসসালামু আলাইকুম ওয়া রাহমাতুল্লাহি ওয়া বারাকাতুহু ওয়া আলাইকুম আসসালাম ওয়া রাহমাতুল্লাহি ওয়া বারাকাতুহু আলহামদুলিল্লাহ রাব্বিল আলামিন ওয়াল আকিবাতু লিল মুত্তাকিন ওয়াস সালাতু ওয়াস সালামু আলাল মাবউসি রাহমাতিল লিল আলামিন ওয়া আলা আলিহি ওয়াস সাহবিহি আজমাঈন ওয়া মান তাবিআহুম বি ইহসানিন ইলা ইয়াউমিদ দীন আম্মা বাদ প্রিয় দর্শক বৃন্দ আপনাদের আমন্ত্রণ জানাচ্ছি পৃষ্ঠভি বাংলা এর একটি গুরুত্বপূর্ণ প্রোগ্রাম কিতাবুত তাওহিদ এর ধারাবাহিক দর্শে আজকে আমরা এ দর্শে যে বিষয়টিকে 